Hi. Let me say a few things before I take your question. As you know, the special counsel released his findings today. Dementia. About their look into my handling of classified documents. <clears throat> I was pleased to see he reached a firm conclusion that no charges should be brought against me in this case. This was an exhaustive investigation going back more than 40 years, even in the 1970s <laughs> when I was still <laughs> a new United States senator. <clears throat> the special counsel acknowledged I cooperated completely. I did not throw up any roadblocks. I sought no delays. In fact, I was so determined to give the special counsel what he needed, I went forward with a five-hour in-person, five-hour in-person interview over two days on October the 8th and 9th of last year, even though Israel had just been attacked by Hamas on the 7th, and I was very occupied. We all know Israel's your top priority, Joe. National crisis. I was especially pleased to see special counsel make clear the stark distinction and difference between this case and Mr. Trump's case. Special counsel wrote, and I quote, several material distinctions between Mr. Trump's case and Mr. Biden's are clear, continuing to quote, most notably, after giving multiple chances to return classified documents to avoid prosecution, Mr. Trump allegedly did the opposite. According to the indictment, he not only refused to return the documents for many months, he also obstructed justice by enlisting others to destroy evidence and then to Biden lie about Biden called the it. press conference to complain contrast, about Trump? Is that what this Mr. is? Mr. Biden turned in classified documents. He's complaining about Trump. the National Archives and the Department of Justice, consented to the search of multiple locations, including his home, sat for a voluntary interview, and in other ways cooperated with the investigation, end of quote. I've seen the headlines since the report was released about my willful retention of documents. This, these assertions are not only misleading, they're just plain wrong. On page 215, if you had a chance, I know it's a long, it's a thick document. On page 215, the report of the special counsel found the exact opposite. Here's what he wrote. There is, in fact, a shortage of evidence that I willfully retain classified materials related to Afghanistan. On page 12, the special counsel also wrote for another document. The decision to decline criminal charges was straightforward. The evidence suggests that Mr. Biden did not willfully retain these documents. The evidence who said I did not willfully retain these documents. In addition, I know there's some attention paid to some language in the report about my recollection of events. There's even reference that I yeah, I kind of feel the same way, Brucey. When my son died, how in the hell dare he raise that? Frankly, when I was asked the question, I thought to myself, it wasn't any of their damn business. Let me tell you something. Somebody now he's playing the dead son card. The day he died, every single day, because he wants he sympathy, died. because he has dementia. Every Memorial Day, we hold a service remembering him, attending by friends. Oh my God, is Biden going to cry? Up. I don't need anyone for real. I don't need anyone, to remind me when he passed away. Biden is sneering and is about to cry. Simple truth is, I sat for a five-hour interview or two days of events, going back forty years. At the same time I was managing an international yeah. crisis, their task was to make a decision about whether to move forward with charges in this case. That's their decision to make. That's the council's decision to make. That's his job. And they decided not to move forward. For any extraneous commentary, they don't know what they're talking about. It has no place in this report. The bottom line is the matter is now closed. We can continue Wait, he's I've saying that he, they're not allowed to bring up the dementia? The president of the United States of America. Now, Is that what he just said? He was like, how dare first they talk Biden, about my mental health? The special counsel said in his report is that one of the reasons you were not charged is because in his description, you are a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. <laughs> I'm well-meaning, I'm an elderly man, and I know what the hell I'm doing. I'm to this country back on its feet. I don't need his recommendation. It's totally out of the Can you continue as president? My memory is so bad, I let you speak. That's, uh, that's, that's what I'm saying. No, look, my memory is not good. My memory is fine. My memory, take a look at what I've done since I've become president. None of you thought I could pass any of the things I got passed. How'd that happen? You know, I guess I just forgot what was going on. Mr. Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, do voters have concerns about your age? How are you going to assuage them? And do you fear that this report is fueled further? 
only by some of you. He looks like a doddering old man. Oh my God. Responsibility for at least being careless with classified material. I take responsibility for not having seen exactly what my staff was doing. Because it goes in and points out things that appeared in my garage, things that came out of my home, things that were moved, were moved not by me, but my staff. But my staff. You're responsible for your staff, Joe. Mr. President, why don't you share Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, Mr. President, look at the body language. Look at the body language. This is great. You would respond with the words, watch me. Watch Many me. American people have been watching and they have expressed concerns about your age. That is they, your judgment. They, that is your is judgment. That is not the Please judgment. Please get an old man fight. Please do it. About your mental acuity. They say that you are too old. Mr. President, in December, you told me that you believe there are many other Democrats who could defeat Donald Trump. So why does it have to be you now? What, what is your answer to that question? I'm the most question? qualified person in this country to be president of the United States and finish the job I started. Do you believe that lies? Do you believe that lies? Mr. President, why are you confusing the names of world leaders? I did not share classified information. I did not share it. With your ghostwriter. With my ghostwriter. I did not. Guarantee you did not. What the well, no, he did not say that. He did not say that. But, well, let, let me answer your question. The fact of the matter is what I didn't want repeated, I didn't want him to know, and I didn't read it to him, was I had written a long memorandum to President Obama why we should not be in, this, in Afghanistan. And I was of this, multiple pages. And so what I was referring to, I said classified, I should have said, it was should be private because it was a contact between the president and the vice president as to what was going on. That's what he's referring to. It was not classified information in that document. That was not classified. <laughs> They're going for blood. Oh my God. Um, when you look back at this, is there anything you would do differently? And do you think that a special prosecutor should have been appointed in the first place in both of these cases? First of all, what I would have done somewhere in Florida is overseeing the transfer of the material that was in my office. In my office, I should have done that. If I go back, I didn't have the responsibility to that. That was my yep. staff was supposed to do that. And Biden ain't going to be the nominee. The uh, and my staff uh, did not do it in the way that, for example. I didn't know how half the boxes got in my garage until I found out staff gathered them up, put them together, and took them to the garage in my home. And all the stuff that was in my home was in filing cabinets that were either locked or able to be locked. It was in my house. It wasn't out in, like, in Mar-a-Lago in a public place where, and none of it was high Trump lives at Mar-a-Lago. that red stuff on it. You know what I mean? Around the corners? That is Trump's house. It. And so I wish I had paid more attention to how the documents were being moved and where. I thought they were being moved to the archives. I thought all of it was being moved. That's what I thought. Now, what was the last part of your question? Whether a special counsel should have been appointed in this case and in the case of your rival, former president. I think a special counsel should have been appointed. And the reason I think a special counsel should have been appointed is because I did not want to be in a position that they looked at Trump and weren't going to look at me, just like they looked at the vice president. And the fact is, they made a firm conclusion. I did not break the law. Period. Thank you all very, very much. That's it? That's it? Look at his daughter out of the room. Ben Duffin says that he has ordered the idea. Go back. Go back. Do it, Joe. Dementia rage. Dementia rage. Dementia rage. I'm of the view, as you know, that conduct of the response in Gaza, in the Gaza Strip has been um, over the top. I think that, uh, as you know, initially, the president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate to allow humanitarian material to get in. I talked to him. I convinced him to open the gate. What? Where is this coming from? to open the gate on the Israeli side. I've been pushing really hard, really hard. 
get humanitarian assistance into Gaza. There are a lot of innocent people who are starving, a lot of innocent people who are in trouble and dying. And it's got to stop, number one. Number two, I was also in a position that I'm the guy that made the case that we have to do much more to increase the amount of material, including fuel, including other items. I've been on the phone with the Qataris. I've been on the phone with the Egyptians. I've been on the phone with the Saudis to get as much aid as we possibly can into Gaza. There are innocent people and innocent women and children who are also in bad, badly in need of help. And so that's what we're pushing. And I'm pushing very hard now to deal with this hostage ceasefire because, as a, you know, I've been working tirelessly in this deal. How can I say this without revealing it? To lead to a sustained pause. In he's calling for a ceasefire? In the actions taking Did Biden just in, accidentally announce he's calling for a ceasefire? And uh, because I think oh, if we can get shit. this delay for that. Oh, uh, oh, no. Delay, oh, no. I think oh, that, no. Uh, we would be able to uh, <laughs> extend that uh, so that we could increase the prospect that this oh, fighting in Gaza changes. There's also negotiations. You may recall in the very beginning. Oh, the right Jews are about to eat his ass. Not literally. Attack, <laughs> I was in contact with the Saudis and others to work out a deal where they would recognize Israel's right to exist, let them make them part of the Middle East, recognize them fully in return for certain things that the United States would commit to do. And the commitment to, that we were proposing to do. Oh, yeah. Related he just to done fucked two, himself. Two, two items I'm not going to go in detail. But. Oh, yeah. One of them was to deal with uh, um, the protection against their arch enemy to the northwest, the northeast, I should say. Press has got to keep him talking. The second one, please keep him talking. Providing ammunition and material for them to defend themselves. Coincidentally, that's the time frame when this broke out. I have no proof what I'm about to say, but it's not unreasonable to suspect that the Hamas understood what was about to take place and wanted to break it up before it happened. No, no, don't let him leave that room. Don't let him leave the room. Don't let him leave. <laughs> oh my God, Biden is so fucked. Like, on a scale of 1 to 10 in the chat, how fucked is Joe Biden? 1 being not fucked at all, 10 being totally and completely fucked. What do you got? Like, Biden just. First of all, basically almost had a dementia rage meltdown against the press and was going to leave the room and then came back to announce on impromptu that he's basically calling for a ceasefire, which is going to piss off the Zionists, something fierce. Biden is so fucked. <laughs> Oh, that was so great. <laughs> and the press, oh my God, the press is so pissed at him. Like, this is not going to stop. This this is going to be, like, I, I, I might be getting back into, I might be getting back into politics now because this is going to be glorious. Biden's downfall is going to be glorious. Yes, the spinning of this. Oh, God. <laughs> See, and some of you didn't want to watch. Some of you didn't want to watch. Some of you, some of you didn't want to, to leave the Vladimir Putin land blessing to watch the Joe Biden, but it was worth it. The wisdom of crowds. Yep, that was worth it. Worth it. All right. Biden has addressed the nation and shown us all that he has the dementia that we all know he has. Now we have to behave responsibly and go back to Putin to see if Putin actually says anything beyond a history lesson. Because we listen to hardcore socialists, we can listen to Vladimir Putin, but daughter on about the 16th century fucking Russia or something. So if people didn't catch this in Biden's like debacle of a press conference, Biden was talking about the president of Egypt and he called the president of Egypt the president of Mexico. Like in, in, in you can't make this shit up literally in the press conference where Biden is all pissed off. Because his mental acuity has been questioned, he confused 
the president of Egypt with the president of Mexico. I don't know if that was clear to everyone, but that actually did happen. And then he walked away and then he came back. No, no, no. This was after he came back. And then he acts and people aren't picking up on this. Biden accidentally announced that he's calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. I don't know why people aren't picking up on this. Like, it wasn't like Biden didn't stand there and go, I'm calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. But Biden, Biden basically in every single other way said, I'm calling for a ceasefire in Gaza to get aid to Gaza. I don't know why more people aren't picking up on that. Biden is about to have his ass handed to him for that. And it's going to be glorious. And I don't even care. I'm here for it. Like, pop me the popcorn. I'm here. He came to Moscow. With I mean, he really, I know we're going back to the Biden thing, but P Putin isn't saying anything interesting. So we might as well talk about things that are interesting while we suffer through this interview. Like, they really did, though. Like, they, they, they offered Joe Biden up on a silver platter to a press that wanted to kill him. Not literally, but figuratively. Like, I wish, I wish they put the cameras on the press in that room. Because like you could you could feel like the seething and it was like his Biden didn't have to do that address. That did it. That did not have to happen. Everyone, everyone realizes that, right? Like. Most people don't like most people don't care about any of this. They really don't. This is only for people who are like hyper connected and hyper tuned into this stuff. Biden did not have to do that address and his entire team set him up to daughter out there and get fed to the wolves and they all knew it was coming they're setting him up to get like the to, to get him off the ticket like this is this this should be obvious now there ain't no way biden's gonna be that nominee not after today he effed himself no, conservatives. No, no. Not everything is a distraction. Jesus Christ. This is an on-demand conservatives. And I know this is this is like something that conservatives say, so I know that it's coming from a conservative and I've heard it several times. This is an on-demand interview in which Vladimir Putin is literally saying nothing. That that press conference was not a distraction for this was not some sort of grand plan to distract the world from Tucker Carlson interviewing Vladimir Putin. Do you think that, do you think the US government doesn't know that Vladimir Putin didn't really say anything in this interview other than give like an hour and a half long land blessing? Of course they knew. Of course they know. Like they've already hacked into all of Tucker's stuff. Of course they know what's in this interview. That that press conference was not about this. That press conference was about they need Biden off the ticket and they all know it. And so now they're setting him up to have the opportunity to replace him on the ticket. That's what that was about. Breaking news. The Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, has uh, said uh, somewhere that the president's press conference this evening further confirmed on live television what the special counsel report outlined he is not fit to be president. I cannot believe we watched. I like I. I'm still reeling from the meltdown that we watched in real time. That was that Joe Biden. Like, thank God we watched it. We all witnessed a moment in history when a presidency imploded right in front of us in real time. I mean, they were going to try to get him out one way or the other, but like. <laughs> The, we 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 witnessed we witnessed Biden standing on the sidewalk with the entire Democratic Party shoving him under the bus that's coming screaming down the street. <laughs> oh God, I do kind of want to watch it again. I do. Do you guys want to watch the Biden press conference again? Does anyone want to do that? One, if you want to watch one, if you want to watch the Biden press conference again Two, if you want to keep watching Vladimir Putin's two hour long land blessing of Ukraine. One, if we want to watch the Joe Biden press conference debacle again, just for a break. 
two if we want to keep listening to Putin. <laughs> one, 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 one. Okay, 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 okay. Let me let me, let me get it loaded up. Let me get it. Oh, there's a there's a, a sign language interpreter now. Oh no, that's not the that's not the one I was watching. That was, that was the previous one. Hang on, it's only twelve minutes long. We can do this again, guys. We can do it again. Okay, I'm seeing. No, Kino, you can't. Kino, stop voting more than stop spamming. We're watching it just because Kino is spamming my chat. Okay, we're taking a break. We're gonna go. We're gonna go relive the Biden press conference again for anyone that didn't see it. It's only twelve minutes long. Everyone, calm down. Let me say a few things before I take a question. As you know, the special counsel released his findings today about their look into my handling of classified documents. <clears throat> I was pleased to see he reached a firm conclusion that no charges should be brought against me in this case. Because you're not mentally this competent to stand trial. of investigation going back more than 40 years, even in the 1970s when I was still a new United States senator. And the special counsel acknowledged I cooperated completely. I did not throw up any roadblocks. Look at his face. I sought no delays. Look at his In eye. In fact, I was so determined to give the special counsel Why are what they he needed. Black? I went forward with a five-hour in-person, five-hour in-person interview over two days on October the 8th and 9th of last year, even though Israel had just been attacked by Hamas on the 7th, and I was very occupied. It was in the middle of handling an international crisis. I was especially pleased to see special counsel make clear the stark distinction and difference between this case and Mr. Trump's case. And, and this is good, too, because we have a direct comparison of Putin versus Biden. Which one of you which listen, I'm not commenting on the content of uh, on, 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 on Putin's character in this. But like, who do you think is a more capable leader right now? Putin who just gave us an hour-long history lesson going back to the fucking 1600s? Or Joe Biden, who is going to yell at the press and call the president of Egypt the president of Mexico? Like, this is the reality that we are in. And I blame the Republicans because they do this. Every Republicans, even if they are handed it on a silver platter, they still lose to this. And they're probably going to lose to the Democrats in, in November, too. And no one wants to be honest about this. But they're probably going to lose again. I don't care if Biden gets pulled off the ticket. I don't care. I don't care. It doesn't matter. Biden getting pulled off the ticket actually makes it more likely that the Republicans are going to lose to whoever the nominee is. And then we're going to get stuck with that fresh hell. Which is probably going to be worse than Biden anyway. Special counsel wrote, and I quote, several material distinctions between Mr. Trump's case and Mr. Biden's are clear, continuing to quote, most notably, after giving multiple chances to return classified documents to avoid prosecution, Mr. Trump allegedly did the opposite. According to the indictment, <laughs> he not only refused to return the documents for many months, he also obstructed justice by enlisting others to destroy evidence and then to lie about it. In contrast, he went on to say Mr. Biden turned in classified documents to the National Archives and the Department of Justice, consented to the search of multiple locations, including his home, sat for a voluntary interview, and in other ways cooperated with the investigation, end of quote. I've seen the headlines since the report was released about my willful retention of documents. This, these assertions are not only misleading, they're just plain wrong. On page 215, if you had a chance, I know it's a long, it's a thick document. On page 215, the report of the special counsel found the exact opposite. Here's what he wrote. There is, in fact, a shortage of evidence that I willfully retain classified materials related to Afghanistan. On page 12, the special counsel also wrote for another document. The decision to decline criminal charges was straightforward. The evidence suggests that Mr. Biden did not willfully retain these documents. The evidence said I did not willfully retain these documents. In addition, I know there's some attention paid to some language in the report about my recollection of events. There's even reference that I don't remember when my son died. 
And now Biden's going to cry and he's going to get dementia rage and cry at the same time. The question I thought to myself wasn't any of their damn business. Let me tell you something. Some of you have commented, I wear since the day he died, every single day, the rosary he got from Our Lady of. Every Memorial Day, we hold a service. This is a dementia ridden grandfather. Friends and family and the people who loved him. I don't need anyone. I don't need anyone to remind me when he passed away. Simple truth is, I sat for a five hour interview or two days of events going back 40 years. At the same time I was managing an international crisis, their task was to make a decision about whether to move forward with charges in this case. That's their decision to make. That's the council's decision to make. That's his job. And they decided not to move forward. Well, for any extraneous commentary, it's a they fair don't point, Brucey. know what they're talking about. It has no place in this report. The bottom line is a yep, matter is probably. now closed. And we can continue what I've always focused on. My job of being president of the United States of America. Now, thank you, and I'll take some questions. Oh, good. President Biden, something the special counsel said in the report see? is that one of the reasons you were not charged is because, in his description, you are a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. I'm well-meaning, and I'm an elderly man, and I know what the hell I'm doing. I've been president, and I put this country back on its feet. I don't need his recommendation. It's How totally bad out. is your memory? And can you continue as president? My memory is so bad, I let you speak. Look at that. My memory is so bad, I let you speak. What does that even mean? That's uh, that's that's my memory. No, look, my memory is not good. My memory is fine. My memory, take a look at what I've done since I've become president. None of you thought I could pass any of the things I got passed. How'd that happen? You know, I guess because I you have a team of people on. working for you, Joe, so, while you were taking a nap. Concerns about your age. How are you going to persuade them? And do you fear that the court is fuel for the Look at the eyes. Only by some of you. Mr. President, 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 as it goes in and points out, things that appeared in my garage, things that came out of my home, things that were moved, were moved not by me, but my staff, but my staff. Mr. President, for months when you were asked about your age, you would respond with the words, watch me. Watch Many me. American people have been watching and they have expressed concerns about your age. That is they, your judgment. They, that is your is judgment. That is not the judgment concerns. of the press. They express it is. concerns about your mental acuity. They say that you are too old. Mr. President, in December, you told me that you believe there are many other Democrats who could defeat Donald Trump. So why does it have to be you now? Why, what is your answer to that question? Because I'm the most qualified person in this country to be president of the United States and finish the job I started. Do you believe that? 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 I did not share classified information. I did not share it. With your ghostwriter. With my ghostwriter. I did not. Guarantee you did not. What the well, no, he did not say that. He did not say that. But, well, let, let me answer your question. The fact of the matter is, what I didn't want repeated, I didn't want him to know, and I didn't read it to him, was I had written a long memorandum to President Obama why we should not be in this, in Afghanistan. And I was of this, multiple pages. And so what I was referring to, I said classified, I should have said, it was should be private because it was a contact between the president and the vice president as to what was going on. That's what he's referring to. It was not classified information in that document. That was not classified. Yo, again, conservatives, because I know these are conservatives because this is what conservatives say. The Putin interview is not live. It is on demand. You are retarded. If you think this press conference was about deflecting from the Putin interview where Putin hasn't said anything interesting, that's retarded conservatives be smarter than that conservatives, because if you guys 
don't start removing your heads from your asses. You are going to lose again in November because you guys haven't bothered to do math to know that you can't possibly win right now in November and it doesn't even matter who's on the Democratic ticket. So perhaps you should stop engaging in so much conspiratorial bullshit that doesn't even make sense given that it's an on-demand interview that you can literally watch any goddamn time and maybe focus on actually winning. Rottweiler, did I miss a super chat? I apologize. I apologize. I didn't see it. My prediction is that Michelle Obama will be the Dem's secret weapon. Newsom simply is not presidential and Nikki Newcomb is going down in flames. Yeah. Yeah. When you look back at this, is there anything you would do differently now? And do you think that a special prosecutor should have been appointed in the first place in both of these cases? First of all, what I would have done is oversee the transfer of the material that was yeah. in my office. Yeah, Republicans, you should be thanking your lucky stars for this. That. If I go back, I didn't have the responsibility to that. That was my staff was supposed to do that, and they referenced that in the report. And my staff did not do it in the way that, for example, I didn't know how half the boxes got in my garage until I found out staff gathered them up, put them together, and took them to the garage in my home. And all the stuff that was in my home was in filing cabinets that were either locked or able to be locked. It was in my house. It wasn't out in, like, in Mar-a-Lago in a public place where, and none of it was high classified. It didn't have any of that red stuff on it. You know what I mean? Around the corners? None of that. And so this is I the Democrats serving Joe Biden up on the on the, the sacrificial moved and where I thought they were being plate. moved to the archive. I thought all of us being moved. That's what I thought. Now, what was the last part of your question? Whether a special counsel should have been appointed in this case and in the case of your rival. President. Biden, my memory is just fine. Also, Biden, what was the second part of your question that you asked just like two minutes ago? I think a special counsel should have been appointed. And the reason I think a special counsel should have been appointed is because I did not want to be in a position that they looked at Trump and weren't going to look at me, just like they looked at the vice president. And the fact is they made a firm conclusion. I did not break the law, period. Thank you all very, very much. This is the best part. Watch this. Watch this. This is the best part. It's like he's almost out. The staff are like trying to get him out. No. Biden just unfucked himself. I'm of the view, as you know, that the conduct of the response in Gaza, in the Gaza Strip, has been. Um, over the top. I think that, uh, as you know, initially, the president of Mexico, Sisi, did not want to open up the gate. Egypt, to allow not Mexico. Humanitarian Egypt. Material to get in. I talked to him. I convinced him to open it. I talked to Bibi to open the gate on the Israeli side. I've been pushing really hard, really hard, to get humanitarian assistance into Gaza. There are a lot of innocent people who are starving, a lot of innocent people who are in trouble and dying, and it's got to stop, number one. Number two, I was also in a position that I'm the guy that made the case that we have to do much more to increase the amount of material, including fuel, including other items. I've been on the phone with the Qataris, I've been on the phone with the Egyptians, I've been on the phone with the Saudis to get as much aid as we possibly can into Gaza. There are innocent people and innocent women and children who are also in bad, badly in need of help. And so that's what we're pushing. And I'm pushing very hard now to deal with this hostage ceasefire because, as a, you know, I've been working tirelessly in this deal. How can I say this without revealing it? To lead to a sustained pause in... Sustained the pause in, means ceasefire. ...actions taking place in, in the Gaza Strip. He done fucked and, himself uh, good.
Because I think if we can get the delay for that, uh, the initial delay, I think that uh, we would be able to uh, extend that uh, so that we could increase the prospect that this fighting in Gaza changes. There's also a listen, negotiation. Listen to what he just said. This is, this is, people are not talking about this is important. He's basic. he's calling for a fucking ceasefire. Now, listen, I think there is a genocide going on in Gaza, so I'm completely in favor of the ceasefire. I don't think any of this stuff. I'm 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 not on any I'm not I'm not pro Israel. I'm not pro Palestine. I'm definitely not pro Hamas. I am anti war and anti genocide. But what I do know is that Biden just said that he wants a sustained pause with the hope that it all just ends. And that is basically the same thing as a ceasefire. And that's really going to piss off the Israelis. And that's really going to piss off the Jews in the United States, too, the Zionist Jews. And where do you think Biden's getting a lot of his campaign money from? That's the biggest fuck up. People can say all they want that the biggest fuck up is Biden confusing the president of Egypt with the president of Mexico after coming out and assuring everyone that his mental acuity is just perfect. But no, that is the biggest fuck up. The accidental announcement that he's kind of sort of calling for a ceasefire, but he didn't really say that, but he did say that. That's the fuck up. The rest of it's bad too. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the rest of it isn't all F2, but that's the that's that's the knife that that's the thing that's going to get him right there you may recall in the very beginning right after right before hamas attack i was in contact with the saudis and others to work out a deal where they would recognize israel's right to exist let them make them part of the middle east recognize them fully in return for certain things that the United States would commit to do. And the commitment to, that we were proposed to do related to two, uh, two, two items I'm not going to go in detail. One of them was to deal with uh, um, the protection against their arch enemy to the northwest, the northeast. I the second one, by providing ammunition and material for them to defend themselves. Coincidentally, that's the time frame when this broke out. I have no proof what I'm about to say, but it's not unreasonable to suspect that I have no proof of what I'm about to say. What was about to take place and wanted to break it up before it happened. That's it. That's it. Yo. That's something else. That's something else right there. 